How have the early development indicator scores changed over the last decade in the province of British Columbia? Well, we did our first wave of EDI data collection back in 2001 to 2004, and this map shows the 56 school districts in the province where we had enough data to analyze. The Dark green areas are the lowest vulnerability uh, on one or more scale of the EDI at 14 to 16 percent, and then it goes up to the light green, to the yellow, to the light reddish brown, and to the dark reddish brown, where over 34 percent of the children were vulnerable on one or more scales of the EDI. And in wave one, across the province as a whole, 26.1 percent of the children were vulnerable on one or more scales of the EDI. Unfortunately, by wave two between 2004 and 2007, you can see that the province has shifted towards the brown. So now we still have one school district which is less than 16 point, uh, percent vulnerable on the EDI, but there are fewer districts in the light green and the yellow and the light brown and more districts in the dark brown, such that overall the provincial vulnerability rate went up by three and a half percent to 29.6 percent and of the 33 school districts that changed a color band 27 got worse and only six got better between then and our final year 2008-9 things stabilized a bit as you look at this map you'll be able to see that no the color distribution on this map didn't shift very much from the previous one Overall vulnerability dropped slightly to 28.6% across the province. When we break it down by neighborhoods, we can look at the individual uh, scales of the EDI and see how they have done. And so here is the physical health and well-being uh, scale showing the distribution of all of the neighborhoods in the province on wave one, wave two, and wave three. The, the size of the bars, the relative size of the bars, show the number of areas that were low vulnerability in dark green, moderately low in light green, average in yellow, moderately high in light reddish brown, and high in dark reddish brown. And so all you have to do, looking from wave one to wave two to wave three, is look at the relative width of the dark green and the light green bars versus the light reddish brown and the dark reddish brown bars to see what the trends have been. For the physical scale, you can see that uh, vulnerability, the number of moderately high to high vulnerability neighborhoods, went up sharply between wave one and wave two, and then remained approximately the same between wave two and wave three. Although the good news between wave two and, and 2008-9 was that the relative number of very low uh, vulnerability neighborhoods did increase a bit. On the social competence scale, we have a similar pattern where things got worse between wave one and wave two, and then again slightly better between wave two and 2008-9, but it did not get back to the point where it was at on wave one. With the emotional maturity scale, things got worse between wave one and wave two, and unfortunately got a, a little bit worse again between wave two and 2008-9. In contrast, we have one good news story. For the language and cognitive scale, you can see that things got slightly better from wave one to wave two, and then moderately better again from wave two to 2008-9. So in the case of the language and cognitive scale, unlike the physical, social, and emotional, we do see some evidence of sustained improvement across the province between uh, wave one in the early part of the decade and 2008-9. Unfortunately, the communication skills scale looks more like the physical scale, with a dramatic rise in the uh, number of moderately high and high vulnerability neighborhoods between wave one and wave two, followed by a moderate decline uh, in high and moderately high vulnerability neighborhoods between wave two and 2008-9. So overall across the province, what we see is an increase in the number of moderately of high vulnerability neighborhoods between wave one and wave two, and a decrease in the number of low vulnerability neighborhoods, followed by a moderate increase then in low vulnerability neighborhoods and a moderate decrease in high vulnerability neighborhoods between wave two and 2008-9.